So it's important that you understand and be able to recognize the following eight features of glacial erosion. So if you're using the junior search geography book called Cyclone by Gill, you should open it now on page 159. The first feature of glacial erosion is a glaciated valley and it's also known as a U-shaped valley. And this was a former V-shaped valley that was carved out by rivers, which has been straightened and flattened by the movement of a large glacier to become a U-shaped valley. So these are highly recognisable by the wide and flat valley floor and the steep, steep valley sides. Okay. The second one is labelled as cirques in this diagram. They're more commonly called corries, C-O-R-R-I-E-S. And these are bowl-shaped depressions high up in the mountains where glaciers began. Uh, basically, corries were little hollows in the mountainside and snow accumulated and accumulated and accumulated into these hollows, becoming very heavy and dense, compacted ice. Um, now, you can recognise these corries as they have three steep sides and one shallow side. Obviously, the shallow side is the area that the glacier began to move out of. So that's number two. Number three is a tarn. So after glaciation, when the glaciers have melted, these corries or bowl-shaped depressions can sometimes fill with rainwater or meltwater and you could see a lake inside of them and the lake is known as a tarn. Number four is a pyramidal peak. So if you have three or more cirques or corries back to back, there will be a high area of uneroded land between them in a peak shape and this is what we call a pyramidal peak. So it is a steep sided pyramid shaped mountain that's been eroded on many sides by cirques or corries. Number five is an arete and this is simply a long ridge separating two corries. Number six are paternoster lakes. When a long narrow lake is in the floor of a U-shaped valley, it's called a ribbon lake. But when a few of these ribbon lakes are stringed together, we call them paternoster lakes. And number seven is a truncated spur. And you may remember learning about interlocking spurs in V-shaped river valleys. Well, truncated spurs used to be uh, interlocking spurs, but they have been eroded by the glacier during the last ice age. And finally, number eight is a hanging valley. And hanging valley is a small little tributary valley that hangs above the main one. And sometimes you can see uh, rivers now after the glacial period, rivers occupying these hanging valleys and maybe a waterfall spilling out over the side into the bigger U-shaped valley. So you would need to be able to recognize all eight features on a blank di on a diagram, okay? You don't need to be able to draw and explain how they're all formed, just one, um, and that is the glaciated valley that I asked you to do the last day. But you do need to be able to recognize all eight of these items on a diagram. So if you have a look at page 161, please, it's showing you some photos about the formation of a cori or a cirque, and it's showing you in figure one, uh, how the snow is collecting. Figure two, plucking, abrasion and freeze thaw action are deepening this hollow. Uh, number three, the glacier starts to move out over the lip or the low edge of the corrie or cirque. Number four, when the glacier is long gone and melted away, it leaves a little lake called a tarn. And number five, there the arete is showing it's a high ridge separating two corries or cirques. Now, here's the work I would like you to do, please. Page 162, have a look at figure two in the OS map and answer the, two, the four questions in the purple circle, please. So number one is identify the feature labeled A in figure two. So I explained to you that if a glacier has melted um, and leaves a lake behind in a corrie, there's a, a word for that beginning with the letter T. So you need to be able to find that, please. So identify it and describe how it was formed. Number two, at what time of year do you think this photograph was taken? So please explain your answer there. Um, number three, locate on the OS map the lake shown in figure two and give the name of the lake, please, and a six figure grid reference for its location. And finally, number four, looking at the OS map, how high above sea level is this lake? So you need to look around 
either for a spot height or a height written on the highest contour line, please. Now, I also would like you to do the four questions on the bottom of page 162 in the blue area. Where in the world can we still find ice sheets today? So you can look back through this chapter or you can Google it to get the answer for me, please. Number two, explain one or two sentences for each of the following, truncated spur, hanging valley, pyramidal peak and Paternoster Lake and explain those for me in your copy. Number three, name the two processes of glacial erosion and explain how each process erodes the landscape. The two of them kind of go together. Number four, name one feature of glacial erosion. Now that is your U-shaped valley or your glaciated valley, please. Draw a label diagram of it in your softback and explain to me in words how that feature was formed and make sure you use the words plucking and abrasion in there. It's very important. Thanks.